All right, everyone, let's talk about the Chargers as they gear up for the stretch run of the season. Things are getting exciting. They're right in the mix for meaningful games, and honestly, that's all you can ask for at this point in the year. But before we dive into the latest moves, let me give you a quick heads up if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We cover all AFC West news here on this channel. Speaking of perspectives, let's talk about something really interesting that just happened. The Chargers made this sneaky good signing that I think deserves some attention. But first, I want to hear from you guys. Drop a comment below about your favorite rookie on this year's squad. I've been seeing a lot of love for Cam Hart and Tuli Tuipilotu. Those fifth round corners have been absolute game changers, and that's actually going to tie into what we're discussing today. So, here's the big news. The Chargers just signed Emini Johnson, and this is more interesting than it might seem at first glance. He's a rookie who went undrafted and initially signed with the Cowboys, but now he's wearing the powder blue. We're talking about a big, physically strong safety who's got that length that really fits what they're looking for in the secondary. And here's why I think this matters. You've got to give major props to general manager Joe Hortiz for his eye for secondary talent. Now, I'm not saying this is some earth-shattering move that's going to instantly win you a Super Bowl. Let's be real here. But when you look at what they're building, especially in that secondary, this is exactly the kind of smart, under-the-radar pickup that could really matter down the stretch. Let's dive into what makes him special. Because when you're heading into the final part of the season, this kind of depth isn't just a luxury, it could be exactly what you need when it matters most. Let me show you some highlights really quick and pay attention to this guy's instincts. The hand speed jumps out immediately, but watch this play again. Did you catch where he came from? Look at how he comes flying into the frame. That's the kind of closing speed you can't teach. You're getting a guy who can play that hybrid role, lining up at almost a linebacker position at times, and when he comes downhill, boom! He brings that hit stick energy every single time. But here's where it gets really interesting, and this is why I'm genuinely excited about this pickup. Let's talk about his RAS score for a second. If you're not familiar with RAS, which is Relative Athletic Score, it's basically the NFL's way of putting a number on raw athletic ability. They take everything into account, explosiveness, size, speed, agility, and grade it out of 10. Johnson scored a 9.06 out of 10, which is absolutely elite. And get this, that's with him actually performing poorly on the bench press, only putting up 225 pounds 13 times. When you look at his other numbers, his height weight ratio is ideal, his vertical and broad jump numbers are through the roof, and his 40 yard dash, shuttle, and three cone times are all impressive. We're talking about a seriously athletic player here. So Emini Johnson comes in, and this is where things get really interesting. I want to show you something that really puts this move into perspective. Pull up the Chargers depth chart from the beginning of the 2023 season. Yeah, just a few months ago. Take a good look at the secondary, particularly at your corners and safeties. While the starters might be the same when you look at the backup situation, it's incredible how much turnover there's been. And let me tell you, this transformation has been absolutely crucial to your success this season. The ability to actually cover people, that's been game-changing for this defense. Think back to last season for a second, it was painful to watch, right? Big plays getting carved up left and right, it felt like nobody could stop anything. It was that kind of defense where you just shake your head and think, this isn't going to work. But look at what you've got now. Cam Hart, Tuli Tuipolotu, and now adding Emini Johnson. There's some serious young talent, some real juice in that secondary that should have Chargers fans excited. And this brings me to something bigger that I really want to emphasize. This is exactly what the Harbaugh effect looks like in action. Here's what makes Jim Harbaugh special, and I've seen this firsthand watching both him and Dan Campbell. He doesn't just collect talented players, he builds a team. That's his superpower. He takes a group of good football players and transforms them into something bigger, a cohesive unit, a real team. And watching this process has completely changed how I view NFL success. I'll be honest with you, before really diving deep into NFL football, I had this simplistic view that all you needed was a star quarterback and a few other playmakers. It's a player's league, right? That's what everyone says. And sure, having those stars absolutely helps. You need that talent. But here's the thing I've learned from watching guys like Harbaugh and Campbell. If you want to win consistently, if you want to build something that lasts, you need to be more than just a collection of talented individuals. You need to be a team, and that's true at every single level of football. And that's exactly what Jim Harbaugh has created, an environment where guys genuinely love playing for him. You can see how the fans are buying in too, really getting behind these players. 
It's wild to watch this transformation happening in real time, right? It's absolutely crazy. Now, let's talk about something that's going to be crucial heading into this next game, the injury report. And yeah, we've got to start with Joey Bosa. Man, I mean, poor guy, though I almost feel weird saying poor guy because, you know, it's just gotten to that point where both he and the fans are probably just exhausted by this whole situation, but he's listed as limited. Then we've got this weird situation with J.K. Dobbins against the Baltimore Ravens where he contributed 40 yards on six carries before leaving the game with a knee sprain. With his status still uncertain, the team will need to rely on their depth at running back to challenge the Falcons' defense and maintain their offensive balance. The list goes on, Bud Dupree Limited, Cam Hart Limited, Khalil Mack Limited. And then there's J.K. Dobbins who suffered a knee sprain in Week 12 against the Baltimore Ravens and is expected to miss multiple weeks. So yeah, there are quite a few question marks on the injury front right now. As for the Falcons, I took a quick look at their situation too. Nothing too alarming on their end either. Like any team at this point in the season, they've got a few players nursing injuries, but nothing that seems season-altering for them. On the Chargers' side, it's much the same. Several players in that iffy category, but nothing that screams disaster. It's not time to hit the panic button yet, but it'll be worth keeping an eye on injury updates as both teams finalize their preparations for this matchup. So while I was looking through all this, I pulled up something interesting about your roster. Let me show you. On paper, you might look at it and think it's not that spectacular, but this is where coaching and attitude make all the difference. This is where that team-first mentality we were talking about really shows up. Look at how these pieces are coming together. Take Quentin Johnston, for example. He's really finding his groove now. Zion Johnson, perfect fit. Rashawn Slater, man, he's not just good. He's become elite. And look at Joe Alt. Coming in as a rookie, you'd think, okay, he should be decent. But he's turning out to be something special. It's just unbelievable how these guys are developing. Flip over to the defensive side, and this is where it gets really interesting from my outsider's perspective. Cam Hart, holy crap, right? The team desperately needed him to step up, and he's playing lights out. Same with Thule, his emergence has been huge, especially with Bosa's situation. Then you've got Khalil Mack. Yeah, he's getting up there in age, but he's still getting it done. Boom, just like that, all these pieces are fitting together. Loss against Raven in previous game was disturbing indeed. Despite a strong showing from Justin Herbert and the offense, key defensive lapses and an inability to contain Lamar Jackson proved costly. But let's appreciate where you are, playing meaningful games ahead and keeping an eye on the playoffs. That was the goal from day one, and you're not just there, you're thriving. Okay guys, that's all from me. Now it's up to you. I've got some questions for you. I really want to hear what you think about where the Chargers are headed this season. What are your thoughts on the Chargers secondary this year? Do you think Emini Johnson could be a difference maker as we head into the final stretch? And the last one, looking ahead to the Falcons game, how confident are you in the team's chances? What's your prediction for the final score? Drop your thoughts below. I can't wait to see what you guys think. And as always, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any Chargers updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.